Gangsters, bootlegging, and speakeasies. That's right, kid. It's time for the top 10 scandalous things that happened in the Roaring Twenties, see? Number 10, Prohibition. It kind of defined the whole decade, and then some to be honest. So what is Prohibition, you ask? Well, there was a growing movement to ban the sale and the consumption of alcohol in the United States, deriving from multiple reasons as Overhitting the sauce was quite common back then. Protest after protest led to prohibition, which made America a dry country. Honestly, this should have been in our Halloween episode, as that's the scariest thing I've ever heard of. However, this isn't the end of the story. Maybe it's the American spirit, or the joy of drinking spirits, or maybe no matter what you do, you can't tell Americans what to do. There were many loopholes that people would use to wet their whistle. Moonshiners would supply underground bars and taverns called speakeasies, where the flappers danced, jazz played, and the drinks flowed. Very scandalous. Now come on in, see, and have a drink, kid. Number nine, the original Don. Snorky, the boss, Scarface, Al Capone, the original Don. Al Capone was an infamous Italian gangster who ruled the streets of Chicago with his bootlegging speakeasies and other lucrative rackets. He became a public figure after the public took an interest in his bougie lifestyle. To be fair, most people at the time were nowhere near as wealthy, and he was. And it was kind of like seeing a real life king to be honest. However, eventually the public's view of him would turn sour. You can only hurt so many people before they turn on you. On what was the worst Valentine's Day ever, the people had had enough. Eventually, Capone would end up in Alcatraz prison, but not arrested for the multiple horrible crimes he committed, but rather tax evasion. So let that be a lesson to the criminals of America. Commit crime without remorse. Yeah. Just make sure you file with the IRS. They're, they're, the, they're the worst criminals of them all, am I right? Number 8, the United Nations Beta. World War I was a really bad one. Shame you couldn't drink, cause that's the first thing I would need after spending any amount of time in a wet, muddy trench. However, after severely punishing Germany and blaming literally everything on Germany, the rest of the winning nations said, we can't lose that many men again. That was too much. No Germany, stop asking for things, we're not gonna let you have them. Ugh. So the beta version of the UN was created, the League of Nations. Sounds like something from a Marvel comic. Anyway, it was designed to make sure something like World War I never happened again, to stop aggression before it even started. Except it was falling apart even before it started, and for some reason the United States being a founding member decided not to join in the end? I, that doesn't even make sense, I don't, okay. Number seven, go ladies. Finally, I get to say something nice about women in history. Ladies, this was your moment, and in multiple countries around the world during the late 1910s and the early 1920s, women got the right to vote. Which of course sounds so dumb to us today, but this really was a turning point in modern history. Through women's suffrage and protest, they were finally given the right to vote, led by multiple notable women. Just good for you guys, man. You can just imagine though how some men were not taking this so well because it's the past and well, they just think really differently and weirdly than us. Good job guys. Number six, silent diaper sniper. Charlie Chaplin, the first comedic actor, a pioneer in filmmaking, comedy, and everything show business. The dawn of modern film and the king of the silent movie. Great guy, right? Well, maybe not so much. What's perhaps most unknown about the man with the dictator mustache is his marriage scandals. I'll sum it up for you. Basically, the dude got married five times, and of those five times, only one wife was older than 18. Ooh, yucky, right? Yeah, and his divorce to one of his wives was quite the scandal back then. Feels like somehow this kind of got buried underneath his legacy. Not to take that away from him, but... Just didn't think he'd be a cradle robber, that's all. For my money, I prefer Buster Keaton. Number five, keep the good times rolling. October 29th, 1929 was a very bad day for some very bad people. And some good people, actually. Wall Street brokers were sitting fat and pretty, smoking big cigars and counting cars going by on the top of their luxurious office buildings. All while sitting there with a grin so big it stretched from ear to ear. This was the case until they took a look at the stocks that morning. As this was Black Tuesday, or in other words, the beginning of the Great Depression. Yeah, 
started in the 20s. It almost seems kind of poetic to have a decade of freedom and partying like it was 1999. To have that same decade end in the worst economic disaster the world has ever seen. The cigar smoking grin would have quickly melted away from their faces as losing their money and they would have to work like the rest of us schnooks. Number 4. The Original Con the Ponzi scheme. You've probably heard this used as an expression when someone tells you that they have a get rich quick scheme, most recently being NFTs. Ooh, sorry, Zoomers. But the expression has its origins in the 1920s. Charles Ponzi told investors he could make them rich in 1920. And because this was 1920, they just believed him. His fake company and scheme sounded legit. Well, one investor told another, and then that investor told a room full of investors. And then they told everyone on the train to work, and so forth and so forth, until Charles Ponzi had created the first Ponzi scheme. And he did it rather quickly, accumulating $15 million in 8 months. Charles, booby, baby, saw some of that Chetty's way. I need a new pair of shoes. Also, $15 million in 1920, that's, that's like all the money in the world. Like that's crazy. That's a lot of money. It's like you can buy like you go to a grocery store of $100, you buy the whole grocery store. Number 3. Poison in the water and ho. If you've ever been anywhere on planet Earth in any time as well, then you might have noticed that humans love the drink. We've been producing alcohol for years, all the way from China to Rome. So when prohibition aimed at taking away our booze, Americans had to find a way to keep drinking. Through a supply I'll explain next, and speakeasies, underground bars and taverns, the American government was rightfully cheesed. They needed people to stop drinking and they needed them to stop drinking now. It was a devil's work after all. So what did the government do? Well, they basically poisoned the supply. Yeah, very unfortunate. A lot of people got sick from this and because it was alcohol, people kept drinking. Dutch, <laughs> I think Mike is poisoning the water at all. Number two, moonshining. Say what you will about rednecks, but if it wasn't for the good old boys in the Appalachian Mountains boiling that ethanol, some bars just would have run out of liquid courage. You can find tons of references to moonshining in books, movies, TVs, and even most recently, Red Dead Redemption 2. Here's the impression. Dutch, <laughs> we gotta start selling hooch, Dutch. Mike has been staring at them bottles for days now. Basically, people were using corn and sugar and whatever they get their hands on to produce moonshine, an ethanol based alcohol that got its name because it's made at night to avoid detection from prohibition officers. Though the famous moonshine runners were found in the countryside, people had distills everywhere and could be found anywhere. People just really like their hooch, man. That's how it goes. They want to drink. Number one, corruption. You might be asking, how is any of this pop? You might be asking, how is any of this possible? Wall Street brokers living fat while others live poor, people cooking illegal alcohol in the mountains and running it, like Burt Reynolds from Smokey and the Bandit, gangsters living a life of excess all while using violence and intimidation to get what they want. Well, it's a little thing called corruption. Not the same corruption that ruined your PlayStation 2 memory card, but the kind that makes police and officials look the other way. Taking a look at Chicago in the 1920s is a good example of corruption. To bring up Al Capone again, he had so many people in his pocket that it would make your head spin. This was happening all over the country in a lot of major cities, but now all the alcohol is legal and the corruption has been cleaned up. And thank goodness. It's not like the police or the government or anyone who holds a shard of power would ever lie to us, right? <laughs> that would never happen. Right? That's gonna wrap it up for me today, guys. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe here at Bumblebee. And if you too wanna to share a drink with me, then check out my socials linked down below. I've been your host, Big Jed, and stay sweet, my little honeybees. <laughs> Number six, silent diaper sniper. Ah. <laughs> uh, Al Capone. <sighs> Oxygen.